Hi, I'm James, and in this video we are taking a look at the UEFI BIOS on this, which is the Dell Inspiron 15 5510 laptop. To access the BIOS, we are going to, with the machine fully shut down, touch the power button and then immediately begin pressing the F2 key. Uh, it isn't necessary to press the function modifier, you can just keep pressing the F2 key, and we can see there with the Dell logo coming up, it then boots us into the BIOS. You don't have to keep pressing it loads and loads of times. Uh, I just find it because I use lots of different laptops. This is the easiest way to reliably get in. You could just press it once at the correct time. Having booted into the BIOS and we have a visual BIOS with keyboard and mouse support. We also have the somewhat exciting uh, option of by pressing F8, uh, we can get the system to output to HDMI. So I can record this directly through my capture card rather than a video of the screen. So from here we get basic information about the machine, so the current BIOS version, service tag, data manufacturer, other useful bits which can be good to know if you are dealing with anything under warranty. We have our basic hardware specs, so we can see our processor which in this case is a Core i5-11300H, we can see the clock speeds that it works within. We can see installed memory, including what is in both slots, the type of video, uh, sorry, display panel that is attached, video card, in which case the um, Intel graphics in the processor, the static allocation of memory to it. There is a dynamic memory allocation, so this increases in use, and also that we have the Intel wireless. Going through the options on the left-hand side, the system came in on advanced setup, and I would always use that personally. We do have options, so if we wanted to add passwords, that is available further down. If we want to find an option quickly, we have uh, the option to view all, which will show all the different sections in the different areas of the BIOS. And there is also a search function, so if we wanted to say find secure boot, type secure and it will bring up different areas in here. So quite easy to find things in the BIOS, but for now we are just going to look through the different sections. So boot configuration, this uh, allows us to turn off secure boot, however as you can see here legacy boot mode is not supported on this device. So while you can turn off secure boot, you are limited to UEFI booting on anything. Uh, but in here, we can turn on and off our different boot devices, load from file and so on if needed. Also have options for key management. Generally, these are not things that most users are going to want to touch. We have integrated devices where we can set our time, our date. We can enable or disable the camera, enable or disable different audio devices and the USB, we can enable external USB ports and booting. We can also limit the functionality of the Type-C USB port here, so limiting it to only video or power rather than other USB devices. Looking at the storage tab, we have the options for the SATA and MV mode, NVMe mode, so we can raid. We can turn on and off the two, two slots and reporting of drive failures and so on. We can also see information on the drives that are connected here, so the type of device and the actual device ID. In the display section, we can change the brightness settings when running on battery and AC power. So have some bits like eco power here and full screen logo, which again, I would not be fiddling with particularly. Connection allows us to tweak settings like disabling the wireless or Bluetooth and also enabling the UEFI network stack. So if you don't want to be able to uh, network boot straight up for security reasons. Power allows us to set the configuration for charging. So we could set either um, high speed charging or adaptive or ones which are going to be protecting the battery if you're using it almost solely on AC power. Um, some of these are configurable through Windows tools, uh, but if you are not using Windows on the system or don't want those tools installed, you can customize these through the UEFI firmware. We also have the same charging uh, settings that we have 
the Windows tool here and thermal management, again, same as we find. So adjusting either for standard usage, uh, cool, quiet or ultra performance, uh, which alters the power states of the machine. We have the ability to toggle whether the machine turns on automatically when a USB-C dock from Dell is connected and also to block sleep mode if that is something that is useful to you. We also have options so the lid switch can be disabled so that the system does not switch off when you close the lid or we have the option to prevent the system from powering on when you open it. This is something that I'm not a huge fan of and switch off personally. Um, Intel Speed Shift technology I would generally not recommend disabling as this will lose uh, some CPU performance and battery life as it will lose some of the abilities pro of the processor to switch speed. Security has Intel pl Platform Trust technology settings, the ability to automatically wipe storage and some other security settings in here as well. I have to admit I am not fully familiar with these so wouldn't want to guide too much usage. Under passwords we can set admin passwords for preventing access to the UEFI firmware. We can also select passwords for the SSDs for booting. We can also in here put in password requirements. Again these are things that most users are not going to worry too much about but if you're worried about theft you may wish to put a password on the machine or if you have uh, people that you do not want to be able to tinker with the settings, you may want to lock them out of this UEFI firmware. Just make sure you don't forget your passwords. Update and recovery would not be needed in general use. We can see here there are some options for BIOS recovery um, and also whether we want to allow downgrading of the BIOS and a few other Dell specific tools. Under system management, we can enter our own asset tag. Once this is set, you cannot change it. Um, we can also decide whether the system will automatically wake up when it is connected to power and set times to automatically power on the system if, for example, you are wanting to run maintenance tasks at specific times. We can also tweak the keyboard settings. So personally, I um, adjust the function keys so that the F1 through 12 are the standard options and things like muting and uh, screen brightness are function key presses but by default they are the other way around. We can also change the keyboard illumination which can be changed to presses and how long the keyboard backlight stays on on both battery AC before dimming. This is quite nice if particularly you want to ensure the battery, uh, the backlight stays on just permanently uh, if you're running on AC power. Pre-boot behavior, we can turn off the warnings that you are not using a 65 watt power supply or a non-genuine power supply and whether we should continue through warnings on errors at boots. It will also post warnings about USB-C docks and we have the option of whether we want to boot minimal checks, a thorough check, or let the computer decide. Somewhat strangely, this is set to thorough, which will slow boot times. Um, I would generally set this to auto to speed things up. Virtualization support on the Intel side of things is all enabled by default, and most people will probably not want to change that. Performance, again, we will probably not want to disable cores, but these are options if you have any software that requires it. Fairly rare now, but it is important to some people. And we can turn off C states, again, something that the average user isn't going to want to do. Turbo boost, which again will impact on performance. And hyperthreading technology which gives you that second thread on each core can be switched off if you have applications which do not benefit from it or have performance loss from it. And Intel GNA Accelerator, which I have to admit I am not familiar with. This is off by default, but you can turn on here. System logs shows any events that have happened, particularly so thermal events would be overheating. Power logs would be when the system is being powered on and off by a button and so on. And we also can see we performed 
ownership date was set the first time the system was used. We connected a lower power power supply here, so these can be useful for some debugging. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you've got any comments, ask them below. Hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos as we post them, and like if you found it helpful. Thanks for watching.